Okay, so I welcome every one of you again to, to, to this design review and uh, I'm very much sure that uh, after today's review, um, you guys are going to start sending me messages thanking me for, you know, sharing what I am about to share with you today. Okay, so these are the um, three designs I received this week from um, the group members. So on this very first design, avoid the use of busy background when you are coming up with design projects because busy background is going to affect the information on your design yeah i like the way this designer played with the you know the use of shadow on this um, project but um, i noticed that aside from the fact that we have the um the guy riding the bicycle on the background we also have different element that i think is taken away from the message okay i'm talking of um Allow me change the color of my brush. So I'm talking of um, this. All right. This is not necessary. If I if I happen to be the one working on this project, I would have, you know, used just only this image that you put on the background here, and they show something that shows that the speed hand get to this side, just so as to depict that that speed effect. Okay. Or if I'm going to use this bicycle guy, I'm just going to create this. Uh -huh, you, I think you did it here. Fair to depict speed. All right. So I think doing that will help the look of the project. You know, like I always say to you guys that the simple your design, the professional it looks. The simple it is, the easier it is for people to see the information on your project. And then another thing I notice here is the use of unbalanced um, layout, which is um i noticed that this is not aligning with this and these are simple things that used to affect the beauty of our project when the information on our design are not well uh you know aligned you always make our design look unbalanced so i'll go straight to the next design so number one what i notice here is the use of door colors when you are trying to talk about celebration the color on your project needs to pop when you make the color dull you are going to make the design you are going to make the focus like the purpose of that design look sick so this is talking about ordination ordination should be more of it should be more of um, celebration and i'm sure that's the reason why we have this thanksgiving service here and then i noticed that we have the use of too many um type here i believe this person is still elena and i pray that um, my advice here is something you hold on to and use it to come up with your next um, project this is one font i need you need to avoid all right so i um and again the, your background is too flat okay so try as much as possible to always make you know something that shows that celebration on the background now i'm not saying you should not go and get a balloon or do a coverty effect on the background no i'm just saying do something that shows play like something playful on the background i explained last week on how on how you can achieve good background for your um, design project so maybe you should just go back and then watch the video and then see what i said about the creating of a background for a design project and then this will now take us to our last design for today this is the project I'm going to redesign and I, I'm going to tell you why I decided to choose this. Number one is the artwork is talking about unlocking your, your full potential. And then we have this image of a robot trying to open this padlock. So no, this is totally off. This is totally off. All right. This is not right for this project. Because if the design is, if the information on the design is talking about unlocking, I believe using a padlock that is already unlocked would have uh, made a lot of sense. Not this robotic um, image that is fighting. In fact, the way you even use the robot shows more like you are saying that it's pos that the meeting is not telling people how to unlock their potential because the part the robot is fighting to open the padlock so you need to be careful with the illustration you use on your design project illustration are one uh, good tool that we designers use to draw attention to our piece and let 
our audience quickly grab the message on our uh, design project fast i really want to make today's review short so let's quickly jump into the redesign of um, this so i'm going to use photoshop to achieve this project and i'm going to use the same frame size with the um project we have here which is 720 by 900 and i'm going to call this unlock it so i have these two images here in fact it's even three all right so i have one which is going to serve as my background i have um, the key all right and then i have this particles here since design is about creating an unexpected solution in a dynamic way i'll start by saying to gain access to anything good in life there are steps you have to follow these steps are treasure keys this is a church poster and to draw attention to church poster design you need to know how to do something well and that is create suspense to achieve this on this project i decided to use a treasure key I'll place this on an unexpected environment to depict treasure and create suspense. Which is what inspired the use of this um, background that you're looking at here. So as to depict treasure and create suspense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this look more like this key is hidden inside this ground. I'm going to now use these particles. This um stones to depict that broken effect all right so the whole idea like i said previously is to depict treasure to make it look like okay your comment for this meeting is to open your eyes to know the secret things the treasure things like the important things that you are supposed to know that will would unlock your potentials and that's the reason why i you know decided to use this uh, elements that i'm using here so let's quickly start so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hide this and i'll bring out the free transform which is um, with ctrl t and i'm going to rotate it this way all right if i make it straight it will look um uh, like too common all right making it bend a bit is going to make it look like something not too uh, ordinary all right so i'm going to scale this big like so and position it somewhere around here create a new layer and i'm going to tag this shadow now shot using the use of shadow is one very um cool thing that you're supposed to know how to use where if you are going into learning how to make photo manipulation so i'm going to change the color of my foreground to black all right then select the brush to go to the brush settings and i'm going to make sure that my transfer is checked i am going to turn my control to be on my to be on pen pressure i'll turn this off okay then now the advantage of turning on the pen pressure on under transfer is so as to be able to control my the strength of my brush if you have been watching my tutorial i'm sure this is not going to be um new to you okay so i'll go back to the shadow layer now and uh, i'm going to zoom in select the brush tool increase the size of my brush now if you don't have a graphics tablet you can still perform the same task just turn down your flow to 15 and then you're still going to achieve the same move okay so i'm going to start by applying the shadow now by coming here to the side of my brush and just have to do this So I'll put this in a group. So I'll shift select the two layers and hit Ctrl G. And I'm going to call this key. Okay. I'll add a layer max to this. Select the brush. Still on the brush too. Then I'll go to the brush tip and use a hard brush for this. I'm going to turn off transfer. Now, anytime you hear me say turn off transfer, uh, 
turn your flow back to 100 don't always forget okay so i'm gonna draw do something like a fake okay so i'll switch to black here and i'm just gonna draw something like a fake rock here like so do the same thing here do the same thing here So I'll make this visible now and I'll scale this down and rotate it. Let's get it there. It's from here. So the whole idea of me rotating the stones is to create this front look of the stones all right because not doing that will make people notice that i am repeating the same image so i'll position this here make a copy again so i'll call these stones this should be stones and i'll make a copy all right before i even do the making of the copy i'm gonna hold down control and i'll click on the thumbnail of all the stones to create the marquee of them because i need to create a shadow i need to create a shadow for um the stones now i'm doing this because the shadow is going to make the stones look real all right and that's one thing i noticed that most of us here most of we designers don't understand we don't always understand that there's a way we're supposed to apply shadow to our project applying shadow to your project the right way is going to make it look real so i'll reduce this i'll make a copy again and this time i'll go to blur gaussian blur and apply the same blur settings and i'll make this go up a bit and this should go this way a bit all right so now let's see okay this is good all right then i'll close this and make a copy of this then i'll drag this behind the key so i'll move this here and i'll make it smaller i'll rotate it 180 degree and this should be somewhere around here okay then um if you look at uh, if you look at my stones there, you see that it's different from the color of my background. So we need to create what I call unity. Um, unity is also one um, is also part of what you're supposed to understand if you are doing photo manipulation as a designer. So I, I am so to make the color of the background blend with the stone. This is how I normally do it. I know some some uh, so many of you don't know how to do this. So I'm going to teach you now. So I'll start with the very first stone group folder and i'm going to click on the black and white adjustment here now this is affecting the whole project but i only want this to affect the stone so i'm going to click on this icon here to affect to make it affect the stone now it's still not looking like it all right uh okay let me just apply to the one below which is this i'll do the same thing again i'll click on click on this icon all right now it's close to it but still not perfect so what, we're, what, I'm, what i'm going to do is i'll go to the curve adjustment and i'll clip this to just only the rock this is the highlight the mid-tone and the shadow of your curve adjustment so i'm only playing with the mid-tone now so i'm going to double click on it to bring out the color picker and i'm going to sample this side oops now you see something is wrong here 
I'm going to hit cancel. Now I'm trying, if you notice, I'm, when I pick a color from here, I'm supposed to see the color here on my color picker screen. But the reason why it's not visible is because I'm on the layer mask of my curve. So I'm going to hit cancel and select the thumbnail of the curve. And then I'll make the same move again by double clicking. And I'll pick a color from here. And I'm going to select the OK button. Now, when you're doing this, please make sure you hit no, not yes. So I'll zoom in. All right. And I'm going to click on make sure the mid tone is checked. And I'm going to click on any of the rock, any of the stones. And then you see now that the color of the stone is now the same color with the background. So what I'm going to do now is to just make a copy of this. All right. And I'll position these above the second rock and I'll hold down Alt and click to apply it to the stones. Why am I using rock? Anyway, so uh, I think we are, you know, cool on this. So what I'm going to do is to add, add more shadow to the key because this is looking more like, um, you know, it's not looking the way I want it to look. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a new layer now and I'm going to call this shadow. And I am going to pick, go to my color picker and change this to black. Select the brush tool and go to the brush settings. Make sure that you are on the soft round brush when you are doing this and your transfer is checked. So I'll zoom in and I'm going to gently apply shadow here.
Now, there's another thing I want you guys to know how to do again when it comes to Unity in graphic design. I want it to look like um, uh, this title here is actually for this project fully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create texture on the title. So what I'm, I'm going to open the title um, group folder and I'll put the title in another group again. And I'll double click on the layer to blend it this. So I'm just going to move this from here to here, like so. All right. So you, now you see that we're having some texture on the title. So I'll move this to this side. Now, when you're doing this, you need to be very careful because um, visibility is part of what make a good design successful. So try do it in such a way that it won't affect the visibility of the information on your design project okay so i'm going to stop here on this then now uh, we can now have the logo here all right so we can have the logo here so i'm going to move this here and i think i'm going to stop here on this